to Empowering Keys for Kingdom Living with Dr. Brenda Jefferson, an apostle of the Lord who teaches in the authority of Jesus Christ through the leading of the Holy Spirit, imparting wisdom and knowledge for good success through Kingdom Living. Brought to you in part by Apostle Brenda Jefferson Ministries, International Covenant Partner. Pastor Brenda Jefferson, and welcome to Empowering Keys for Kingdom Living. People of God, this is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, my soul cries, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. You know, it is in Christ that we live, we move, and have our being. But not only that, it is in Christ that we have been made complete. And I've come to declare and decree today to you, the viewing audience, that you are the head and not the tail, that you're above and not beneath, that yes, you're the lender and not the borrower. You're blessed going out and you're blessed coming in. As a matter of fact, the word of God says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning and it's your morning. And if I were you, I would take off the spirit of heaviness and put on a garment of praise. This is the day that the Lord hath made. I want to welcome you, the viewing audience. It's been a while since we've been together. Glory to God. But I wanted to share a very powerful message with you. We celebrated our 20th church anniversary. Glory to God. And we had Dr. Jamal Bryant with us. Glory to God. And it was absolutely awesome. And even though it was not this year, the word is still potent. The word is still timely. So I want you, the viewing and audience to listen as the man of God, Dr. Jamal Harrison Bryant from Lithonia, Georgia, pastor of New Birth Missionary Baptist Church. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Come on, is he worthy of more than that? What a mighty God we serve. and tell them something good is going to happen to you. Something good is going to happen to you. Something good. Something good is going to happen to you. But everything you've been through, you deserve something good. think about what he's done for me. Didn't have to let me live, but he did. For that I give him glory. 
uh, allow me a point of personal privilege just to uh, tell you how honored I am uh, and amazed uh, at the humility and the grace uh, that exudes uh, out of your mayor. I saw when I got off the planes. I had no idea that I was going to see him again. And I uh, extend a high commendation, not for coming, Apostle, but high commendation for staying. And that says a lot about his character. You, you ought to thank God for that kind of leadership. Same uh, amount of uh, time he's been mayor. It's the same amount of time I've been pastor at New Birth. Uh, so I, I know what you're going through. I'm, I'm praying for you. Uh, I, uh, if you'll allow me a moment of transparency, uh, just to uh, express to you how I know that uh, tonight is not an engagement for me, um, but it is an appointment. Tra transparently, this is... Uh, the Jeffersons. Amen. And, uh, I heard I was coming. I was looking for Wheezy and George. <laughs> and I got into a deluxe apartment. And, uh, and uh, I've come to a place, um, Bishop Robinson, where integrity matters. And uh, your character has got to be stronger than your charisma. <laughs> say that to say uh, your apostle invited me many months ago to come and uh, I'm, I'm in between mayor changes of administration uh, changes of my team and uh, when uh, I accepted to come I was not where I am now and uh, that this woman of God uh, really has a prayer life I'm telling you, she's got a prayer life. And you don't even understand why. Is uh, I am in the middle of my own conference at my church right now. Uh, it was uh, somewhere around three to 4,000 people in my sanctuary. And I am in Little Rock, Arkansas. This woman of God. Uh, my staff told me uh, just cancel, just send somebody. Uh, we can reschedule uh, next year. And uh, the Holy Spirit restrained me. Uh, and said I needed to be here on tonight. Uh, I, I said that uh, because I started Apostle uh, Pastor 19 years ago. And uh, when I started pastoring, I invited people who I looked up to, who I admired, who I saw on television, and none of them would come. And they wouldn't come because they didn't think I was big enough. And I made a covenant with God. If he ever elevated me, I would never forget how far he's brought me from. I say that with no arrogance, with complete humility. But a whole lot of people who get anointed get amnesia. I'm not going to say nothing to me. Sometimes you got to be mindful of the grace of God. Because the reality is, I don't know how you feel about it, the reality is the best singers never get a record contract. The best actors are never seen on television. And the best preachers never have a mega church. So whenever God blesses you, it's not because he's so good. Because you're so good, but because he's so good. Come on, I can't hear my body. Right? I need you to do me a favor, please. I want you, for this apostle, for this pastor, I want you to stand and cheer for them like they are Bishop T.D. James. Uh, so I, uh, people 
would tweet me all day, are, are you really coming to Little Rock? They didn't know if it was a rumor. <laughs> uh, when they ate this uh, evening, and people said, I, we didn't think you was really here uh, because I didn't post anything or say anything in social media, uh, Pastor, because I snuck out of town uh, to come. I, I couldn't even bring an armor bear from Atlanta. I brought my old armor bear from Baltimore with me. <laughs> Y'all think I'm joking, huh? I, I'm leaving on the midnight train to Georgia. I, I, get back, but, uh, I, I said all that to say I honor uh, the oil that is on your life and just grateful uh, for who you are as a woman of God. Just one more again, give God some praise for her. Even more than her, I want to extend flapping accolades uh, to Pastor Jefferson. Yeah. It takes a secure man to be with an anointed woman of God. And I just thank God that he's man enough to handle the woman of God that she is. Come on, I need y'all to help me salute this man. Come on, help me give my glory for Covenant Churches, thank you so much for rolling out the plush red carpet of hospitality. Uh, for me, you, you make me feel a five star and you've done everything in the spirit of excellence uh, and I'm grateful I uh, came outside of the airport a limo pulled up I didn't know if I was going to a funeral or what I was, I, I was grateful uh, for the hospitality uh, Bishop Robinson longtime friend thank you so very much uh, for coming give God a hand clap of praise for our Bishop Robinson converted me a year ago, uh, not to Jesus. I already knew him, uh, but I'm, I'm an innocent, I'm a ghetto preacher. And uh, I, I've been against quartets my whole life. I, I just didn't understand them. And uh, I came to Bishop's church a year ago and he strapped me in. and made me listen to three quartets in one night. I've been a convert ever since. I am just uh, grateful. Uh, if you have your Bibles, would you mind standing and go with me to Mark chapter 10? Mark chapter 10, I want to begin at verse number 18. Mark 10, verse 18. Why do you call me good? Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. Shouldn't commit adultery. Don't steal. Don't give a false testimony. Don't scam. Don't dishonor your parents. Teacher, he declared I did all of those. I've been in holiness since I was a boy. Jesus looked at him and, and loved him. One thing you lack, he said, go sell everything you have. Give it to the poor. And if you have treasure in heaven, then come follow me. At this, the man's face fell. He went away sad because he had great wealth. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard is it for rich people to get to heaven? You may be seated. I want to preach for a little while on this, the uh, 20th anniversary. I, I want to preach using as a subject, don't switch up on me. Don't switch up on me. 
when you look at the person beside you, tell them, after all the stuff I've had to deal with, look at me now and say, in this season of my life, I can't tell you. Please don't switch up on me. It's hard to play the game with the rules always change. Equality can't happen if the starting line is not the same for everybody. In the insightful book, The Coddling of the American Mind, how good intentions and bad ideas are setting up a generation for failure. The author uncovers how the requirements for first grade have changed in just one generation. Prior to 1988, in order for you to enroll your child in first grade in Little Rock, Number one, the child had to be at least six years old, six months. Number two, in Little Rock, in order for them to get in the first grade, before 1988, they had to have two to five permanent teeth. Before 1988, in Little Rock, to get in the first grade, they had to be able to speak and enunciate with such clarity that a police officer or a crossing guard could understand their speech. Number four, they had to be able to draw in colored lines. Number five, they had to be able to tell their left hand from their right hand. Number six, they had to be able to be away from their parents without having a temper tantrum. Number seven, they had to be able to repeat eight to 10 word sentences. Number eight, they had to be able to count 10 pennies correctly. Number nine, they had to be able to copy down letters and numbers. All of that apostle was before 1988. Now something has shifted. That by the first grade, your child, your grandchildren, have to, by the first grade, have to be able to count by tens. They have to be able to read books with five to 10 words per page. By first grade, they are expected to know their numbers from one to 100. By first grade now in Little Rock, they gotta be able to form complete sentences on paper using phonetic spelling. Now in order for them to get in the first grade, they have to be able to complete sentences on their own. And days gone by for the majority of those of us who are in the room. Kindergarten consisted mostly of social interaction and hands-on ex exploration, sprinkled with finger paint, music with a triangle, sitting the Indian style without pulling your neighbor's hair able to recite the alphabet, alphabets even if it was in rhythmic syncopation. But today, by first grade, wow. it is mostly sedentary and structured with more time at their desk. These methods are effective for older children, but for younger adults, these methods can backfire and produce negative effects on social and emotional development. To that end, based off of today's structure, 
Many of us, if we were governed by that then, would today be on prescriptions of Prozac, be on Ritalin, and be on placed on special education. Because it is outside of our physiological structure to be able to sit still for six hours and only raise your hand or go to the bathroom. There's an obvious connection here with the surge of prepubescent suicide. And now you got nine year olds who are depressed, 11 year olds who have anxiety, 12 year olds who are cutting themselves, and 13 year olds who think they're lesbians. All because they have been placed in an environment that is not natural to who it is that they are. So at six, we're raising them to do work, but have no play and don't understand why they're dysfunctional. The same thing can be said why it is that we have lost an entire generation of millennials who no longer come to church. Because we want them to sit still for five hour services. We want them to in fact memorize the scripture. We force them to fake speaking in tongues without them having a legitimate relationship. So their first semester in college, they won't even come back to the church that gave them the scholarship in the first place because they resent where it is that they were made to sin because we taught them religion but never gave them relationship. So now you have a generation that does not know about deliverance they only know discretion. So I am saved as long as I don't get caught. And then when the sheets are pulled after me, I want to cry and snout at the altar because I treat God as an emergency box. So I only start to pray when my period is late. I only begin to fast when my business is on Facebook. And we begin to cry out under God when I got no money to go back to school next semester because we have made God a cosmic sugar daddy that is only supposed to show up when we need him. So we only use him as an ATM, hoping that when I shout, I can get something material out of him. But I don't worship because I just want him. For the last 25 years, we have, in fact, corrupted a generation to think that your relationship with God is completely predicated on praise. So they only know how to shout, but they don't know how to pray. And so God is calling for a generation not of shouters, but of intercessors who understand early in the morning when I seek you. I know some of y'all don't like this. See, the problem, intercessors don't need reserved seats. In intercessors don't come with armor bearers. Intercessors don't have reserved parking spaces. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Intercessors ain't just gonna show up at your little meet just to sit there. Uh, but they know if there's a real crisis, put me in, coach. I, I know how to pull down strongholds. I, I know how to cut demons off at the head. I, I know how to make a paycheck stretch even when I don't have the resources to get it in. But the rules have changed. The, the, the criminal justice system seems to be a con game when it comes to people of color. I'm still aghast at the three-run circus that took place in Dallas, Texas in the case of both Botham James, the innocent brother in this apostle who was a praise and worship leader. He was gunned down senselessly by a white police officer named the Amber Guy and was only sentenced to 10 years in prison. I gotta pause right here. You all are critical thinkers. I gotta ask you, a question, how do you think the narrative would have been different if in fact the victim was a white girl 
who was a praise and worship leader. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And the officer was a black man. Here's your shout, who broke into her apartment. Now had he just got 10 years, all the evangelicals would have been on TBN and Daystar at the Word Network talking about the impropriety of America. But I am afraid how we have heard the silence of the prophetic mantle in the face of injustice. When God is calling up prophets, it ought to be more than promising me refrigerators. It's got to be more. Y'all ain't saying nothing than BMWs at 10,000 square foot homes. But God is looking for authentic prophetic voices who are able to cry loud and spare not. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and seek my face, here it is, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear what happens and this police officer Ann McGuyton only gets 10 years when Tanya McDowell got five years for registering her daughters in the wrong school district when Marissa Alexander got a dozen years for issuing out a warning shot against her abusive husband and a bullet never penetrated his flesh the U.S. Sentencing Commission in their most recent report says that black men are 19% more likely to get higher sentences than their ca Caucasian counterparts. Lee Merritt, the attorney of Botham, said in an interview after the proceedings, he didn't understand the brother, hear this, who went and hugged the young lady who killed his brother. He says, I'm a Christian. And I believe in the power of forgiveness. But Lee Merritt, the attorney for Botham, says, how do you forget to give somebody who's still lying? Oh, and y'all ain't saying nothing about that the forensic evidence has come in uh, that Botham was not standing, did not approach her, but based off of the trajectory of the bullet, was sitting down and had his hands up. I got to pause here and see so many times uh, there are some people in Little Rock who got a grace pass who you forgave and y'all ain't gonna like it who you should have checked. We pray that you've been tremendously blessed by the teaching of Apostle Brenda Jefferson. If you would like this message in its entirety, please call 501-813-4634 or 501 501- 834-5477. Until the next time, may God bless you and keep you is our prayer.